Corpus Christi. Welcome to another Better Way Ministry Bible Study. Today's message and study was going to be on marriage. What God hath joined together is an awesome thing. If you are married, if you are married, there's a message here for you. If you're contemplating marriage, there's a message here for you. Men and women were put onto this planet to repopulate the planet. To replenish the planet. That's what God's command to man was. We're going to learn some stuff today. Let's get right to it. Father, we love you. You're an awesome God. You are the God that made marriage. You made husband and wife. You made male and female. And Father, we look into the word of God that we might understand you. Now, Father, for those that are not in Christ, we will start this off by giving them a message that they may be, that they may be enjoined to the Holy Ghost and be the tabernacle of the Most High God and live in the kingdom of God today. In Father, only by your word. Now, Father, write, the table of, write your word on the table of our hearts. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Every word of God is pure, and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You know, God's word is pure. The world's running around, and they want something to make sense to them. And when they look at the word of God, it just doesn't make sense. You know, I'm reminded of Isaiah 55. It starts off by saying, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye and buy wine and milk without money and without price. How do you buy anything if it doesn't have a price? What's the medium of exchange? If it isn't money. And then God says, my ways, he gets our attention with that. Or at least he thought he would. Then he writes down, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And truly, it's just evident all through the word of God. And the world just goes crazy because they won't accept this truth. That's not us. <laughs> life in Christ. Life in the kingdom of God. Look, folks. The Christ has come. The message was spent. It went to the shepherds in a field keeping their flock. The most, imp the most important message the world ever heard is that the Christ, oh, the Savior, he's born. <laughs> Well, I can tell you that he died, and he died for me, and he died for you. And he is good. There's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no fretting, no fear, no devils have power over you. Oh, my word. God is a good God. Here. Take a look at this. See that right there? Look at that. God made you go upright. You know, I printed this because I just want to see it. I want to see it a whole lot. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondman. Has God set you free? Oh, or did you set yourself free? There's nothing like having the God of heaven and earth set you free from sickness, from fear, from disease, from evil, from the plots of other wicked individuals, set you free. Free from the world system, free. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Has God made you go upright? <laughs> 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, without which you cannot live in the kingdom of God. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Here's the barometer of your own soul. And I'm saying this for the folks who are not in the Christ, who have not been baptized into Christ. You must be. My Bible says when they that gladly received his word were baptized. If you have not, and if you've got that on the back burner and you're sitting back here, you haven't received the word and don't think that you have. Because when you receive his word, you will be baptized. See, the repentance John the Baptist was to prepare the way of the Lord. What did he preach? Repentance. All we like sheep have gone astray. That's why we have to repent. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's why you must repent. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, having, having lived in your own way, instead of what this word says, is the iniquity. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily. There's the Lord's brother John. He writes, There's never one verily in the book of John. If there is a verily, in other words, this is verified. He's telling the reader, Hey, psh, look, give me those cheeks. This is verified. Not the Lord's brother. The Lord brother says, Hey, this is verification of the verification. Verily, verily, I'm telling you. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is little spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. That's not the recital of a, of a prayer. You can call on the name of the Lord in truth and in spirit. But to call on the name of the Lord and, and think that you are instantly born again is nowhere in Scripture. But if you continue in His Word <laughs> and you never look back, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. you got to have it. It's the circumcision of your heart. What does that do? It puts off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Why? So that you can get the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost can move into you. When God touched the mountain, when people touched the mountain God was standing on, the holiness of God said, kill that person. The way into the Holy of Holies is now made, but only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So now the Holy Ghost can live within us, but he's not living in a, in a defiled tabernacle. You are going to get the circumcision of Christ. You are going to have your heart, which is where the place where all the sin comes from, circumcised. And you're going to take that circumcision. In the Old Testament, there was a piece, there was a body piece. And it would decay, and it had to be buried it is the same, only it's open to women. Now, after Christ, and he put us all on the same level field that every heart must be circumcised and you must put the body of the sins of the flesh off of you. Okay, buried with him in baptism, that's where you bury it. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Have you got faith in the operation of God? Have you learned about the operation of God? How can you have faith in what you haven't learned? Go study. It's right there, Colossians. Go into Galatians and Colossians. Oh, First John. Oh, read the Gospels. Oh, Jesus will transform you. Who hath raised him from the dead. See, our faith is in the operation of God. Who hath raised Jesus from the dead. Why? Because you're going to walk in newness of life, a new creature. 
He that believeth on me, as scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There's a lot of people that talk about they believe in Jesus Christ. Here is the standard by which you may know <clears throat> if you believe. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you have rivers of living water, the Spirit of God, flowing out of you? That's not too hard to tell. You remember the old man before you believed. Do you have now the Spirit of God flowing out of your belly? See? If not, you don't believe, as Scripture has said. The devils believe, and they tremble, but they don't have eternal life. Don't be a believing like a devil. Therefore, let us fear, lest a promise being left off of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Are you overcome with sickness, disease, fear, doubt? Is your life in turmoil, confusion? There's a promise for that. In every situation of this life, it's covered right here in this word, but not in your own way. Today, if you will harden, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. You can't say, yeah, but. You have to say, yes, Lord, and yield yourself to him. For he that is entered into his rest is also ceased from his own works as God did from his. See? Remember? All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, doing his own works. Well, now, if you're entered into God's rest, you cease from your works to do his. The results are up to him. All you got to do is say, yes, Lord, I'll go do it. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God is a good God. This word will decide for you whether or not you are in Christ or not. And if not, the rest of what I'm about to tell you, you're going to miss out on. This is for those who are in Christ. This is for those who have the Holy Ghost. That's the promises. The, when you enter into his rest, they to whom it was preached entered not in by unbelief. Believe. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. This is Jesus talking. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Just try it. <laughs> Just try. I plead with you. Try doing Jesus' doctrine. You will not be sorry. The grace that will flood your life. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. You must obey God to get the Holy Ghost. They that received his word gladly were baptized. So you believe? Now you must be baptized into Christ. For as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Jesus just happens to be the name of the Christ. And because God selected that name, he said, I have given you a name that is above every name. No, he selected the name that's over every name and gave it to the Christ. So you must be born in Jesus' name. Or you must be baptized in Jesus' name because he's the Christ. You're not partakers with Jesus. You're partakers, you're joint heirs with Christ. See? Anyways. Oh boy. Let's keep going. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go on into perfection. Whoa! Is God right in this or the devil? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go to perfection. See, he's saying leaving them, knowing that they are secure in your heart, in your mind, in your knowledge. 
you have it. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. There's a lot of churches that they do nothing except labor here in these things. Over and over and over and over and over and over. And God's trying to say, hey, look, you got it. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. What did he want to do with Adam and Eve? We're about to see this. What did he want to do with them? He wanted to take their hand and walk with them daily. Today, in this generation, right now, walk with you in the kingdom of God. Well, you've got to have the doctrine of Christ and understand and know how to get into the presence of God. And then how it is that you're supposed to act when you're in his presence. He is the potentate of the world. He's immortal, invisible, the only wise God. His counsel to us is immutable. It's so immutable. In fact, he said that he swore by an oath to us. My counsel is pure. God swore. It's immutable. So you got to know these things. So next week, what we're going to do, Lord willing, is go into what these are. And we're going to start studying them. This week is, is marriage, so let's get on to it. And this will we do if God permit. God has to permit you to leave these principles behind for you to go forward in, to perfection. And if you don't have these principles of the doctrine of Christ, if they're not firmly rooted, you're going to miss you're going to go out unbalanced. See? He, so it's if God permit, we'll do this. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. See, there's a lot of things that go with your salvation. You want them. Trust me, you want everything that God has. His mind is not like our little mind. Oh, his mind is wonderful. He has thought of nothing but goodness for you. Marriage. That's a good concept. Let's take a look at it. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. See? Bring forth abundantly. The fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God's created the great whales and created every living creature that moves which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth, and the evening and morning were the fifth day. God's creation, he created. Then he said, Okay, now take off. Fill it up. Fill my earth. He gave them the ability to do this. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, the beast of the, a beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. God made the beast of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creeps on the, upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now he got them to multiply. And, but here he talks, starts talking about man. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So here it is. He's going to make man now in his image. But then he said, and let them. Now, when he said the cattle after their kind. He didn't have a bull over here and a cow over here. Oh, he made a bull on this day and he made a cow on that day. No, he says cattle. Okay? After their kind. So now he's saying, let us make man in our image. Okay? And let them, because when he makes man, there's going to be two. Take a look. This is chapter one. This is before the details. See, Moses is writing this. And he's understanding that men are going to get all messed up. Actually, he doesn't understand it. He just not understands what he's to write. God is the one who understands. Man is going to get messed up. So, in the beginning of the Bible, let's set forth the overview first. And then let me go back and fill these details in so you don't get lost in the details. I will tell you what my goal was. And then we'll fill in the details. And this is precisely what you're about to read. And when you view the word as it's written, 
I mean, it's not too hard to tell. He's giving us the overview, and then he's going to go into the details. <laughs> I don't know how that became a revelation, but it is a revelation. Now, the Word of God is revealed. And I guess if you're in rebellion, anyways, let's just look. So God created man in his, in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay? So he makes man like he made cattle. Well, we know he made bulls and cows because then he said, go replenish the earth. So then he made man. And he made man, male and female, made he them. Or created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. He's talking to them. He's telling the man subdue. He's telling the woman subdue. He's not saying, Okay, man, you subdue and you can't. He's not telling the woman, Okay, you subdue and you can't. God's saying, Be fruitful and multiply unto them, because they can't be fruitful and multiply without one another. It's a... They need each other. They are one. Okay? And have dominion over the fish and sea, follow the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the face of, or upon the earth. And the Lord God formed man. Now this is chapter 2. This was chapter 1. So he gives us the overview in chapter 1 so that we don't get lost and get all messed up in chapter 2. And yet, what you're about to hear may be a little surprising to you, but it's the Word, because it's pure. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of the tree of the garden thou mayest eat. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. Those are not one, that's not one word. Help is not connected to the word meat. Meat describes the help. And we're, I'll show you the definitions here in just a minute. But the purpose here of this was that God made man, and then he gave him duties, and the man has duties to, to do, but he was also commanded in chapter 1 as an overview to replenish the earth. Well, he's alone. There's no help to help him do that command. Of what? Replenish the earth. Of multiply. He cannot multiply on his own. There's no, it is not good that man should be alone. Why? Because he's not going to be able to, he's not going to be able to do my command of replenish the earth. And how that fact gets lost? Just thank God it's found. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, the beasts of the field. But for Adam there was not found any help meet for him. So here he is. He's placed in the garden. And God, makes, God starts making the animals and he brings them, everyone past Adam. And whatever Adam called it, that's what we call it to this day. We call it by the name that Adam gave it today. The devil, has, he can't do anything that the Son of Man does. So... And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, the beasts of the field. But for Adam there was not found in help, meat for him. Definition of meat. Precisely adapted to a particular situation, need, or circumstance. Very proper. See, when you, when you look at the definition, you see the command. The command is to man. Replenish the earth. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Okay, there's no one here to help man do that. There's no help that's meat, that's designed, that's precisely adapted for that commandment. There's nobody here yet. See, when you look at the word, 
It's the word. Words have definitions. They are not interchangeable. You can't take the definition and start interchanging it with anything. Charity is not love. It is charity. Definition of meat. Precisely adapted to a particular situation, need, or circumstance. Very proper. It wasn't until man, till God made woman that the command to man is possible. See? So he gives us the overview so that as we start reading the individual things and how they came about, the details, it makes perfect sense. It all falls in line. We see. We understand it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof instead. And the rib, which the Lord did, God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought it, her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. He did not call them one spirit. God had to put his spirit into that rib. It is not the spirit of man that is in the rib. It is the, it is the rib of man that woman was made from, but the spirit came from God. He created them. In the beginning, he that made them made them male and female. And then he said unto them the commandment, subdue the earth. To them, to man. Man is not the male. Man is not the female. Man is the male and female. And they are one. It is the only way to accomplish the commandment. There is no other. And if... And there is no other way. We happen to live in a generation that there's a lot of people that want to decide, well, you know what? It's really not, doesn't just have to be the way that God said it is. That a marriage could be, uh, you, you can marry, I guess you can marry things beside a man and a woman. And that is not true. Because the institution of marriage was created for the purpose of fulfilling the command. To replenish the earth. So he, he made man and woman, made them into a marriage. See, he calls her and shall cleave unto his wife. Now we're about to see, let's bring it home. Let's bring it modern day. This is before the flood. This is the first man and woman. So this is the beginning. Now, Let's take it all the way to our Lord's teaching about marriage. How they are to interact. Now that we understand that the command is replenish the earth, multiply, subdue the earth. That God made man and he didn't, he didn't, when he said I made cattle, he didn't say I made the male and female cattle. No, we know that he did, or else there wouldn't be any cattle. All right? But for man, oh, because we're just so smart, <laughs> because we're such smart Alex, he said, okay, here's man. Now, I made you male and female, but I said unto them, Multiply. I said unto them, have dominion. I said unto them, subdue. I said unto them, see, because he put his spirit into each. But they are one flesh because the woman is made from the rib, from the side of man. Okay. Now, he needed a help for that particular purpose and that command to accomplish that command. So God made woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is the book of Ephesians 5. Before he gets 
anywhere before he starts handing out commands and telling order. Before this, you have to know what he created. You see how he made them one flesh. Then he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that it was that you gave us dominion. Thank you, Lord, that you made us one flesh. Thank you, Lord, that you made woman a part of me. That without me and without your spirit, there is no marriage. See? She was a help meet to the command. Precisely adapted for a particular purpose. Very proper to your command. So giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Husbands, submit to your wife in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your husband in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord before anything else. Submit to each other in the fear of the Lord. All the commands are predicated on this foundation. Without this foundation, if you lose sight of this foundation, oh, pride comes in. The devil comes in. He starts a woman. He starts making you think that just like eating the tree will become a good thing to do because you're going to get knowledge and wisdom and your well-meaning nature says, that's a good, that's a good thing. Yeah, let's do that. And forgetting, well, when you do, you're going to die. Okay? All right. Before you have to submit to God in the fear of the Lord to one another. And everything else comes after that. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Just submit. You don't have to submit to every husband, just yours. For the husband is the head of the wife. Why? Because he was made first and you came from him. And, the, and God created it this way. He didn't diminish you. He just, there's an order. That when we're all submitted to God and with the fear of the Lord, there's an order. For the husband is the head of the wife, and he is the Christ is the head of the church. See? We may have pastors and teachers, but they're not the head. They're just over the flock, but the head of the church, that is the Christ. Everywhere, so that we will understand, God acknowledges marriage, and, he's, and he, he patterned it. He patterned his church after marriage so that we would understand how the church was to work. If there's not a man and a woman, there is no creation going on. There is no multiplication. When the man dies without the woman and they can't come together and have children, they die. The species is gone. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. That is a very particular comparison. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. But remember, he submitted to you in the fear of the Lord. You're submitted to him in the fear of the Lord. Now, from this position... He's the head. Well, where's the head? <laughs> I mean, yes, the women are at our sides, but so is the man at the side of the woman. They're, they're, they're one. Okay? All right. But so there's, there's not a strife between the spirits. God knowing what he's created. Then, okay. Wives, here it is. You were made for him. I made him first, gave him this command. 
and there was no help for him, I made you. Without you, nothing is possible. God elevated women. Without you, you are the center of our desire to fulfill. Every desire we have into our Father, it comes through the wife in a marriage. Where the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. We have to go through Christ to please the Father. We can't. Without Jesus Christ, there is no pleasing him. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Yeah. What did Jesus do? He became robed in flesh forever. He took the sin, the torment of sin, the agony. He took it upon himself and he dealt with it himself. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their own wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. Now, before we go any further. So when the, when the word comes... And he's washing his wife with the word. The washing of it is saying, hey, I know you're well-intentioned in this area. But let's go back and let's look at what God said. He said, if we eat that tree, we're going to die. Oh, you're right, honey. Man. I forgot. It's okay. I love you. And I didn't forget in this case. And so, let's not do it that way. Let's go to God together. And then we'll ask Him. And then we'll fulfill the desires of your heart. How He says to. And so you do it that way. Submitted unto one another. In the fear of the Lord. Letting it work in conjunction she has an idea. It may look bad. What, are you trying to kill me? No, she was trying to get wisdom. She was not ill. She was well-meaning and good intentions. She spotted truth. Hey, if I get that, I'll have knowledge and wisdom. That's a good thing, right? It would be if it didn't kill you. But we forgot that part. So he comes and he says, okay, let's work on this. That's our commands. Husbands, love your wives, give yourself as Jesus did. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ in the church, and I forgot one verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. See? That's how related we are into the Christ. We are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. Now, men and women, you are joined. God did it. You didn't do it. You didn't do the joining. God did. You could no more make yourself a part of the Christ if he doesn't join. You're not. But with your choice, you can be. We know that. So we know the choice of a marriage. Yes, I will marry you. Will you go with him? Yes. Okay. Then God gets behind it, does the joining, because why? Because you're fulfilling his command, see? But the joining part is up to God. If he hadn't said you're one flesh, you wouldn't be. You'd be two individuals. And that's the way a lot of people try to live their marriage, as two individuals. It doesn't work. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. 
He commands men to uh, love his wife. Don't take offense, women. God didn't command women to love their husbands. They need to learn how to, from the elder, how to implement that in some cases. Love comes naturally to a woman. So don't take offense, men. He commanded the weak points. To man, he had to, God, being the good God that he is, had to command me, Mark, a man, to love him. Oh, love you? Mm. All right. I will love you. And for this is the love of God, that you keep his commandments. Mm. Well, all right then. See? He had to command me. He didn't command women to love. It's their nature. Now, if you ask their husband, if you ask a woman, hey, do you respect him? Eh, well, you know, I kind of like him. Do you love him? Of course. It's the way they're built. It's the way you're created. You ask a husband, do you respect her? Well, of course. It's news to the wife. Boy, the way you treat me. I say, what? See? Do you love her? Well, yes. See? I'm commanded to love. So what does he do? He commands the wife, see that you reverence your husband, see that you respect your husband. Hmm, well. See, he commands our weak sides. The commands are different to the male as it is to the female. But why? Because we're one. <laughs> and God knows we need it. Oh, God is so awesome. Okay. To emphasize this point, let's take a look. And Terah took Abram, his son. Now, this is Abraham before his name was Abraham. Whoa, we got to get going. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, and his son's sons, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abraham's wife. Okay, so we're setting it up. Abram's father is Terah. Abraham, or Abram, married Sari. Sari is daughter-in-law. Okay, so you're going to say, gee, Mark, you're goofy. How did you explain it this way? Well, it's just the way it's... <laughs> now you're getting a look at how I'm wired. Okay, so you get married. The husband now has the wife's mother and father-in-law. The wife now has the husband's mother and father-in-law. If there's brothers and sisters, she now has a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law. He has brother-in-law, sister-in-law. And it goes on. Why? Because now they're one flesh. Because you are one flesh, her mother became his mother-in-law is the way that we know who who was born from who. But one? Oh yeah. Yes, we are. So God sets that up and he sets it up right here. We respect the joining that God the what God creates in a marriage of being one flesh that can multiply it has to be meat for him. If it isn't meat, if it's not designed for the particular purpose, the purpose was multiply on the face of the earth. How that's missed from our our lawmakers. Pray for him. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt in Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gehar. And Abraham, now his name has been changed, and said of Sarah, instead of Sari, his wife, she's my sister. Okay, well now he's going to designate, yes, I mean, they both had the same father, not the same mother, so it is his sister, but he married her. So sister became wife. Wife is what made them one flesh. Sister did not do that. God joined male and female and made a marriage and she's his wife well he wants to revert and call her what she was before God joined 
Lots of men try this. Um, and Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gihar, where they're living, sent and took Sarah. Right. Oh, she's your sister? Well, hey, come here. You're going to be my wife. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman that thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. And Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou all slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, said, He's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he's a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So here we see man trying to call and go back and revert as if the joining from God had not taken place. God steps into the middle and says, you're going to die. Give him back his wife. I joined them. You get in the middle, you'll die, and she'll go back anyways. I threw this in because we do this. We get tired of one another, we don't submit ourselves unto the God, and we don't submit ourselves unto one another in the fear of the Lord, and all kinds of bad takes place. And the way to get all the bad out and all the good back in is to submit yourself first to God, and then submit yourself to one another in the fear of the Lord, in the design that he created, happiness will ensue. But to go ahead and start taking the power when God joined, we don't have that power. And just call it, to send her off and say, no, nope, you're single again. How many times does God give away his daughters? But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. See? There is an order. Man, if he listens to the devil, will make himself God. God said, no, you can't do that. Not unless you want to be like Satan. He tried that. I slew him. I have slain him. He is slain. He spoke and it was done. He just hasn't gotten around to gathering them up yet and putting them into hell, but psh, that's coming. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So women who have the spirit of Christ, when your husband is not doing right with you, you go to his head. He made you. He put you where you are. He joined you. You have power. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. In other words, if a man prays with long hair or, is, or a hat, whatever covers your head, you dishonor your Christ. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head for that is even all one as if she were shaved so if a woman doesn't have hair that covers her head or hat on either one then you're uncovered and you dishonor your head your husband for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then let her be covered. Now, okay, let's just keep going. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Remember, she was meat. She was designed for a very particular purpose, to help man obey the commandments of God can't multiply without it. 
That's why you're. That's why we're here. For man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause, for that very reason, ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Because they're going to get in there and they're going to start messing with your mind. But when you honor your head, when I honor the Christ, when you honor your head, now, in this, you're safe. You have power. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Okay, so we know that we need one another. In the first place, we are to submit unto God. We submit ourselves unto one another in the fear of the Lord. Before we recognize that the woman was created for the man, blah, blah, blah. Oh, sorry, Lord. It's not. It's the word. Before we recognize anything else, that we recognize that we were made one. But the command came to them. You have power. You have dominion over everything that I created. You all have it. Now you all together get the command to replenish. Then he goes back and he says, now I designed, I made you for a specific purpose to help him. Okay? Replenish. Okay. The only way to get that done is to submit to one another. See? In the Lord. The man is not without the woman in the Lord. Otherwise you can't hear. You'll fail the command. You are one flesh. Okay? The woman's not without the man. She will fail in her purpose. Your designed purpose. You're going to fail. Okay. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? He gets past this, and then he just goes back to the original statement. He goes, look, you need one another. You need one another submitted unto God. You submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. Judge. Judge in yourselves. I gave you some understanding. Judge in yourself. Okay? Now, now here's what to judge. Is it comely that a woman pray to God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him? So first he, he, he shows the one, he flips to the other. You both have requirements in order to do this properly. But if a woman have long hair, it's a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. See, it's not, this isn't some mystical statement here. God is telling us what he has designed. Then he's telling us how the marriage works. For the woman which hath an husband is bound unto the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my beloved, wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. See, the comparison is always unto Christ in the church of a marriage, because it's the most intimate part of us that we can have. It's the most firmly known and aware, I mean, you are in a marriage continuously, and the thought processes of a marriage are without stop, and so is the thought processes of being in the kingdom of God through the Christ. So he, he makes this comparison to us. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. And that's all we have time for today. I hope that this was a blessing to you. I hope that you were able to glean some stuff from this. So, Corpus Christi, come back next week. I'm not sure whether it will be marriage part two or if it will be um, whatever it is. It will be good. It will come from God. So, grace to you.
my pride aside at your feet. I'm safe. 